Hello and welcome to lesson one of software design and development. If we go to the SQA website, we can see what we need to learn by going to the course specification. We'll open it up. If we scroll down to the contents and go to course content, skills, knowledge and understanding, here's the list of all the things that you as a pupil need to know. So we've got all the headings here and we've got a bit of detail on the right. Now it's in my opinion that a lot of this is far more difficult to understand without having already done some practical. So we're going to start with practical today. And in this course specification, you, you can see we've got two main practical headings. We've got implementation data types and structures, and we've got implementation computational constructs. So we're going to start with the constructs. We're going to do these first three here. Expression to assign values, expressions to return values using arithmetic or operations, and expressions to concatenate strings. We're going to cover all of that today. So in order to do this, you need a programming language. We're going to use Python. Now you can download Python by going to python.org, downloads, and then scroll down and just download whatever version you want. I'm using Python 3. I don't know which version of Python 3 it is, but they're all the same pretty much. So as long as you've got Python 3 point something, you're good. So you download it and install it. If you don't want to install it, or you're not using a computer that allows you to install it, you can use a website like repl.it. This is what I'm going to use. This is a great website, allows you to write many different types of programs, and it's free as well. If I click log in, it will allow me to log in using a Google account that I already have. So I don't need to sign up to Replit, I just use my Google account. Now, when you log into this for the first time, it'll ask you a bunch of questions about the programming languages that you use. I chose Python and HTML, CSS, and it automatically put in Node.js for no reason at all, but it just threw it in there. Now, if I want to create a new program, I can just click on one of these buttons, or I can click on plus new REPL. If I do that, it asks what language, and it asks for a file name. It automatically generates a file name, but some of these are a bit bizarre, like shameful forthright linked list. Very strange. I'm going to call this intro program. Press enter. It starts creating. It makes it, and it opens it. So this is your window. On the left, we've got the files that we're using. Now, at National 5, you'll only ever use one file. Later on, you will use multiple files at higher level, but for now, one file. So we can ignore that, pretty much. On the left, you've also got settings. You can change your settings here. I'm going to leave it the way it is, and I'll just leave that there. In the middle, you've got your code window. This is where you type your code. And on the right is when you run the code, this is where the results appear. Now, if we go back to the course specification, you can see the first three bullet points, expression to assign values, return values using arithmetic, and then expression to concatenate strings. Now, a lot of this, on its own, does nothing. But in order to see the results of those things, we need to be able to display things on screen. So if this is the first time you've ever used Python, you're going to want to display things on screen. You're going to want to output your results. This is how you do it in Python. You type print, and then you open a bracket, and Replit has a code assistance here that helps you by closing the brackets for you automatically. We open a quote and we type in what we want to display on screen. I'm going to type, hello world. Pretty standard for the first time you're using a programming language. And there it is, hello world. Excellent. And it doesn't matter what you type in here, it'll display it. Easy peasy. Now the first bullet point, expressions to assign values. What that means is creating a, a thing called a variable and giving it a value. Now, variables are storage locations in the computer's memory. It's a small location that can store text, numbers, and other things, objects, lists, all sorts of different things. For the moment, we're just going to store a wee bit of text. So what I'll do, I'll just push this down a couple of lines, and I'm going to create a variable to store some text. Now, when creating a variable, you have to come up with a name for that variable. I'm just going to call it my var. So this is the name of my variable, and I'm going to assign it a value by saying my var equals. So I'm, I'm saying that my var is going to be equal to whatever I type in here. Now, when you type in text, let's say this is going to be my name, Mr. Computing. If I leave it like this, this will not work. You'll notice that Replit it kind of gives it squiggly underlines if I hover over invalid syntax. That means that I've messed up my code. That's because all text needs to be in quotations. So this is what converts it into a string. In programming, text is known as a string, a string of characters. So this is text, also known as a string. 
So my variable, my var, now equals, it contains the value Mr. Computing. Now if I print my var, it will print not the words my var, but it will print what is contained within that variable. So if I run this, there we see my name, Mr. Computing. That's my name. <laughs> so this is it. This is as simple as typing a variable name and saying it's equal to something. Now I can change this as well. I can make it equal to a number, 456. If I run that, it will print 456. Pretty good so far, right? So that is assigning a value using an expression. This is the expression to assign a value. Storing that value in a variable. Easy peasy, right? What about the next bit? Expressions to return values using arithmetic. All right, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation, that's a fancy word. Let's give it a blast. So we've got a number, we've printed that number, but what if I do some maths, right? Here's a, an even bigger number, holy moly, what's the answer? I can't do it in my head, so I'm going to run. Look at what happens. It gives us the answer. 997. Looks pretty accurate to me. And it's not just adding we can do. We can subtract. Let's subtract. This is going to be a very small number. A negative 1. 85. Negative 85. We can also multiply. Now in programming, multiply isn't an X like it is in maths. It is an asterisk or a star. Asterisk, this is going to be a massive number. There you go. You can see Python is very fast and it can work with big numbers very quickly as well. Let's make these numbers even bigger. Holy moly, no way I could do that in my head. But it figures it out anyway. Look at that, that's beautiful. And we can also do division. Now division is quite special. Wait, you see this. 24 divided by 6. What's that? That's easy, that's 4. But for some reason, Python outputs it as a Decimal number, 4.0. We'll get into data types later, but for now we're just looking at simple arithmetic and outputting it on the screen. So we have assigned my variable, my var, equal to the result of this calculation, the result of this expression, this mathematical arithmetic expression. 24 divided by 6. It outputs my var, the result of that calculation. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, right? Well, what was the third thing on that bullet point? Expression to concatenate strings. Well, as we discovered earlier, a string is just a piece of text, a string of characters. That's what it is. What does concatenate mean? It means to join things together. So if we want to concatenate strings, we're joining strings together. Well, let's go back. Let's go and create a string and join them together. Mr. Computing. Typing is very difficult. Mr. Computing. And I want to concatenate. I want to join two strings. So let's do that. How we do it in Python is we have a string, and let's say, hello, and we use the plus sign, plus my var. Here we are concatenating the string my var, which is Mr. Computing, to the string hello. And notice I've added a wee space here as well, before the end of this string. You'll see why. When I run it, it says, hello, Mr. Computing. If I didn't have that wee space there, it wouldn't include it in the output. If I just had it without the space, it joins the two strings with no space between them. Okay, okay. Pretty good so far, right? What if I wanted to add more strings? Oh, that's pretty easy. We just do more pluses and we can add a dot on the end. Oh, this will be great. This is more like a real sentence. Oh, we missed the space again. Hello, Mr. Computing. Full stop on the end. We can even add more. Let's put it inside this string. How are you today? So there we go, we're concatenating strings together. Hello plus my var plus how, how are you today? Not bad, right? But here's a question. What if your name isn't Mr. Computing? What if you're letting multiple different people use this program, this amazing program that we just wrote? Not everyone's going to be called Mr. Computing, so are we going to change the code every time someone new comes up? Let's say someone new comes up, his name's Darius, and he uses the computer and he runs it. Well, that's good. But then what if Edward comes up? Is he going to type his name into the variable here? No, that would be silly because when you get a program, when you buy a, a game or a program, it doesn't just hard code your name in there. You have to type it in as the user. So how do we do that? Well, we can get an input from the user. Instead of hard coding the string here, we can write input open bracket and we could just leave it like that. This will work. It's waiting for the input from the, the keyboard. If I run this, 
you'll see it runs and it waits. So I can type in a name here, Mr. Computing, and then it'll say, hello, Mr. Computing, how are you today? So that's great, but when I run it, there's no prompt for me to type anything. Well, we could do a couple of things. We could print a message first and say, enter your name, like that. So when I run it, it says, enter your name, and it's waiting here. All right, that's pretty good, Mr. Computing. Hello, Mr. Computing. So far, so good. Another option is, and then when someone else uses it, they can just type in their name. Hello, Darius, how are you today? Very good. Another option is, instead of printing a message before the input, you can add your message inside the brackets of the input. So I could say, enter your name. Now, if I leave it like this, it's going to not look that great if I run. It says, enter your name, and it's waiting right at the end of this string here. So I could type in Mr. Computing, but that looks silly, and everyone's going to be tempted to put a space at the start, which isn't very good because any spaces get included as the variable. What would be better, what I prefer to do, put a wee colon and a space, and then it looks neat, and it doesn't tempt you to add any spaces. Mr. Computing. So this has been your first lesson, how to print messages, how to join strings onto there, how to get text from the user as well. We also did some maths, but we're going to use that a little bit later in the next lesson. Hope you enjoyed it, give it a practice, and I'll see you next time.